Last week's images of celebratory rioters attacking the United States Capitol were replaced this week by their mug shots. The FBI launched a massive dragnet across the country to track down and arrest many of the people who assaulted police officers, killing one and defacing the building in their violent, unsuccessful quest to stop a vote in Congress and perhaps to do much worse. That effort by law enforcement continues this morning with the help of a trail of digital evidence left behind by the rioters. NBC business and technology correspondent Joe Ling Kent has our Sunday focus. The social media platforms rioters used to organize the unprecedented attack on the nation's capital have now become a hotbed of evidence that sent law enforcement knocking on their doors. We have received more than 100,000 pieces of digital media which is absolutely fantastic. After widespread criticism of making too few arrests on January 6th, investigators, with the help of social media sleuths, are now rapidly piecing together who stormed the Capitol. There's no doubt that this is probably the best documented crime scene uh, in history so far. That's because of what former FBI Special Agent Mark Pollitt calls the staggering number of digital devices at the scene. What are some of the little digital footprints that suspects are leaving behind from this? You carry your phone right, everywhere you go, and it's talking to the network all the time. You know, the other thing is, I'm not a big fan of, of Twitter personally, but people that are seem to do it as a stream of consciousness. Well, from an investigative perspective, that's gold because you're really seeing inside that person's head. In over a dozen cases so far, law enforcement relied in part on social media evidence to identify the suspect. Take the case of Eric Munchell. Court documents show the FBI started with these photos of him inside the Senate chamber. They used his baseball cap, the patch on his chest, and his unique shirt to match him to a screen grab of a live stream from inside a nearby hotel lobby that captures Munchell before he put his mask on. From there, they used an image search to find this picture of Munchell just outside the Capitol building. According to court documents, the authorities then located his social media profiles and gathered enough evidence for FBI agents in Nashville to arrest him on January 10th. Jenny Cudd of Midland, Texas, went live on Facebook and boasted about the damage done. Uh, we did break down the um, Nancy Pelosi's office door. The FBI matched her to this photo taken by a journalist inside the Capitol. Robert Packer's offensive sweatshirt captured the attention of reporters who posted pictures of him on Twitter. A tipster in Newport News, Virginia, recognized the sweatshirt and provided law enforcement with a picture of Packer inside a store from a month earlier. It was enough for the FBI to arrest him. So just as organizing online can manifest into real-life action, so too can trails of evidence. There's no distinction between online and offline anymore. That reality pushing the most extreme voices onto more private platforms like Signal and Telegram ahead of Inauguration Day. There's actually a lot of confusion in some of the conspiratorial communities. They've been told for years now um, that there is a plan to trust. You know, I think one of the real concerns is that that belief in illegitimacy, that belief in a stolen election is going to persist and perhaps uh, result in further violence. On Saturday, the U.S. attorney in Nashville announced FBI agents had taken a 56-year-old woman named Lisa Eisenhardt into custody. She is the mother of Eric Munchell, the man with the zip ties we just highlighted. She now faces several charges as well. In the court filing, the FBI says social media helped agents find her. And Joe Lane Kent joins me now live. Joe, good morning. So social media companies have been pulling extremists off their platforms for the last 10 days or so. But to what extent are they actually helping law enforcement find the people who attacked the Capitol? Hey, Willie, good morning. Facebook and Twitter have a pretty long history of cooperating with law enforcement behind the scenes on these types of investigations. And now Facebook announcing it's banning any new events from being organized near the Capitol as a prevention measure, the White House or any state Capitol buildings as well through Inauguration Day. Also, Facebook saying it's not going to allow any ads for weapon accessories like gun safes, vests and holsters in the U.S. at least through two days after Inauguration Day out of what they keep calling an abundance of caution. So a lot of changes right now, Willie.
Amazing what law enforcement can do with technology these days. Joe, so interesting. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.